With new faces across the board and Oscar Shibwe off to the NBA, Kentucky basketball is going to look pretty different this upcoming season. But what is this roster going to have to do to overachieve? You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what is going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we're going to be taking a look at the Kentucky Wildcats and asking the question: What's it going to take for Kentucky basketball to overachieve this season? I'm going to give you three things that will push Kentucky over the hump this upcoming season. Also, on today's episode. It is back. Kentucky versus Indiana is officially back. Going to dive into what that means for the Wildcats and what it means for the Hoosiers as well on today's episode. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. want to remind everyone out there that we are free and available on all platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the show. Uh, seeing a surge in subs recently. Also, if you're listening on podcasts, please make sure to follow along there as well and download the episode. So let's go ahead and get into it. What is it going to take for Kentucky basketball to overachieve this season? I'm going to give you three reasons on today's episode. The first, and I think this may end up being the biggest one here, is overcoming your youth. I, I think that we could very, very well look back at the end of whatever Kentucky season is this year, and whether it be in the NCAA tournament or whether it not be, Uh, And we may look back at it and say, yeah, youth and the inexperience across this roster is what held Kentucky back. Look up and down the rotation this upcoming season. Seven of Kentucky's nine-man rotational players are underclassmen. Your starting point guards, DJ Wagner, or excuse me, your starting point guard, DJ Wagner, freshman. Backup, Rob Dillingham, freshman. At shooting guard, you're going to have a starter veteran in Antonio Reeves, but your backup player, Reed Shepard, is a freshman. Your wing, your small forward spot, Justin Edwards, freshman, Adutiero, sophomore, did not get to play a whole lot last year either. Uh, your power forward spot's going to be a mix of Trey Mitchell and Aaron Bradshaw. Bradshaw, freshman, Mitchell, senior though. And then at your center spot, you've got you've got Onyenzo, who is a sophomore, and then Trey Mitchell, who I think will rotate down to the five at different points again. He is a senior. If Zvonimir Ivasic does end up coming to play for Kentucky, which right now I have absolutely no idea where that currently sits, uh, Big Z would also be a freshman playing there at center for the Wildcats. That would make it a 10-man rotation, and eight out of Kentucky's 10-player rotation uh, would all be seniors. It's going to be a, or excuse me, would all be freshmen. It's going to be a very young team, And while Coach Cal has had success with younger teams, youthful teams, during his tenure with the Wildcats, there has not been a lot recently to point towards postseason success with uh, with younger squads. In fact, it, it consistently over these past few years, you can look across the board, it has consistently been teams that have a really nice blend of youth and experience. And then you've got, obviously, you've got to have talent mixed in there as well. It's been teams that either are older or have a very nice balance that have been able to really make runs in the NCAA tournament. And that's essentially what we're talking about here today. What defines overachieving? I think it's pretty simple. If you're a Kentucky fan out there, you probably have an idea of where you would like to see Kentucky get to in the NCAA tournament, whether that be the Elite Eight, whether that be a national title. You can't really overachieve past a national title. But I think that genuinely a lot of Kentucky fans want to see this team push past that Elite Eight, and and make a championship run. So what's it going to take for them to overachieve? I think the biggest thing here is overcoming their youth. Are they going to be able to do that? I think the talent that they have on this roster points towards there's a possibility. Absolutely. I'm not going to sit here and tell you no. We did a show back in, I want to say, either early August or late July about how no team with the number one recruiting class in the country has won a national title or really done a whole lot in the NCAA tournament 
since 2012 when Kentucky did it. And I think you look up and down this roster, as far as your five stars go, I mean, DJ Wagner, Justin Edwards, they're, they're Aaron Bradshaw, these guys are not your just typical, really good high school recruits. I mean, DJ Wagner, Justin Edwards, and Bradshaw should all be lottery picks for the Kentucky Wildcats if Bradshaw sticks around for a second year, which I doubt. I think that he will certainly be close to that range, if not in that lottery. Justin Edwards, uh, DJ Wagner, absolutely, I think are going to be lottery picks next, next season. Rob Dillingham could very well end up being a lottery pick if he's able to lead the charge for the Wildcats next season, as long as he does not declare this year or uh, or enters the transfer portal. I think also you got on Yenzo uh, at some point could end up being a lottery pick for the Wildcats. I don't necessarily know if you're going to see that this season. And then Big Z, if he does come and play for Kentucky, yeah, absolutely, you could see him in that lottery range as well. This is a very, very, very talented team. It's just they're raw. They're inexperienced. A lot of these guys haven't played the collegiate game, uh, much less played it for a considerable amount of time. I like the pieces that you have that are y- that are older, though, with Antonio Reeves, with Trey Mitchell, and then you've also got guys like the, in there like Adu Thierro who have been here for over a year and have completely changed, I think, stylistically what they bring to this team because of how, the, how he's physically changed. I, I think Kentucky's got a really good roster. I think they're very talented. But they have to overcome the youth. That's the first thing here on today's episode that I wanted to get to. The second thing here involves Kentucky playing well against good opponents. I want to dive further into that in just a second. Before I do that, though... I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. And Game Time is the fast and easy, easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. If you want to head over to Athens, Georgia this weekend to watch the Kentucky Wildcats take on the top-ranked Georgia Bulldogs, I think it's going to be an incredible game. I almost actually ended up going and using uh, u- using game time to help me find seats uh, for that game in Athens, but my little brother uh, has pulled me away to another SEC contest. I'm actually going to be heading to Oxford, Mississippi to watch Arkansas and the Ole Miss Rebels tangle uh, at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I have absolutely no ties to either SEC school. My little brother likes Ole Miss. We're going to go watch Ole Miss play, and it's thanks to game time with killer last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and the best price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets and they absolutely did that for me yesterday when i went and purchased tickets for this Ole miss arkansas game you can see the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive all in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal without the hitting fees you can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College. That's L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, continuing along here on the Tuesday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. Really appreciate you making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. If you have not checked out the Locked On College Basketball Podcast with Andy Patton and Isaac Shade, uh, you are really missing out on a phenomenal podcast that breaks down all things going on in the college basketball world. We are getting closer and closer to the start of the 2023-24 season. I'm very, very excited. I'm thrilled for the Wildcats. It's going to be a phenomenal month of October, both on our show and on theirs. So if you want to go check them out, you can follow them on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Go subscribe. They absolutely deserve it. All right, two more reasons here why Kentucky basketball could overachieve or what it's going to take, rather, for them to overachieve this season. The first reason was overcoming your youth. We talked about the youth across the roster and how it's going to be very important that the talent wins out there with these younger players. I think a lot of this has to do with the coaching staff unlocking that potential that they've seen in younger players in previous rosters. The second thing here, overcoming the best of your schedule. This is the second most important thing in order for Kentucky to overachieve this season. I think throughout the season, beating the best teams on your schedule, it's going to 
not only prove to your fans throughout the season that you can compete against these guys, but it's also going to give your fans and give your program and give your kids, honestly, confidence and optimism that they can take on a postseason slate and they can be productive and they can win some of those games. I want to throw something out here for you that you may have not known. Kentucky went six and eight in quad one games last season. You may ask your, you may ask me, Lance, what are quad games? Or, well, I'll explain it to you. What's a quad one game? I think college basketball in the past few years has really uh, trended in an analytical direction. There has been a heavy emphasis placed on uh, computer models and numbers and what uh, what statistics think about your team and how they perform against good and bad opponents. And in the, these past few years, there was a new rating system introduced that really, I think, does strongly influence how the selection committee for the NCAA tournament views individual teams. And they have decided to, and we, we can dive into this in a later show whenever it actually becomes relevant in the, in the season, but they've decided to essentially break college basketball up into four different quadrants. They don't release these net rankings until like a few weeks into the season. So it has to, the, the model has to collect data and then determine who's good, who's bad, who's plays, played some people, who hasn't. And then it will divide the college basketball landscape up into four quadrants. Obviously, quadrant one is your best of the best, the cream of the crop. Quadrant two is the, the second tier teams, third tier teams. Then quad four, which is where it bottoms out, is the worst are the worst teams. And depending on whether you play a team at home at a new, on a neutral site or on the road, uh, they are a quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four team because of where they fall in the net ranking. So, for instance, you could play a top sixty team in the country at home, and and if you win, that's a quad one win. But if you go on the road and play like a top one hundred and twenty team, and they're like ranked one hundred and twentieth, but you went on the road and beat them, that can still technically be a quad one win. I don't know the exact specifics here. But I think you understand what I'm saying as far as like how it's ranked out. The best of the best, where you play them, the computer model is going to tell you whether or not it's a quad one win or not. And Q1 wins are essential to building a solid NCAA tournament resume. And Kentucky last year went six and eight. Those six wins were were good enough to get Kentucky into the NCAA tournament on top of some of the other quad two, excuse me, victories that they had. All six of those victories came against SEC competition. Uh, UK went six and three, by the way, in the SEC. So they actually went winless uh, in Q1 games and their non-con slate. I want to go through here and throw out some of the games that could be these Q1, these big-time victories, because these are the games where you're going to need to see this young roster overcome their youth and then also execute against really good opponents. So here are some of the possible Q1 games on Kentucky's schedule. You go on the road and you play in Chicago against Kansas. That is almost definitively going to be a Q1 game. At home against Miami, in Atlanta against North Carolina, at Florida, at Texas A&M, at Arkansas, at home against Tennessee, at home against Gonzaga, on the road at Auburn, at home against Alabama, at Mississippi State, at home against Arkansas, on the road against Tennessee. That's 13 opportunities there to pick up Q1 wins. And I don't think it's realistic to sit here and say that Kentucky goes 13-0 in all of those games. You also can't have bad losses on top of this. You have to get the good good wins and not screw up with the bad losses. For instance, Kentucky's quad four loss to to USC last year, uh, South Carolina that is, that was a really, really big time blow to Kentucky's NCAA tournament resume, and it ended up holding them away from getting a higher seed uh, at the end of the day. They also had Q3 losses to Georgia and Vanderbilt. Uh, not a great look there. So you have to get those good wins. You have to make sure you don't slip up consistently or more than once against really bad competition. By the way, some extra Q1 games at home against Missouri, Florida, on the road at Vanderbilt, and that at home against Ole Miss. Those are possibly uh, Q1 games. We'll just have to see, though. But you've got opportunities littered up and down the schedule and then you've got four really solid ones, I think, Kansas, Miami, UNC, and Gonzaga, and your non-con slate. You have to be able to overcome the best of your schedule, at least a large portion of the best of your schedule, in order to get that high seed and to give yourself a chance to make an NCAA tournament push. And that's the final thing I want to get to here. There's not really a whole lot else to say other than the final thing Kentucky needs to overcome is their recent history. 
The Kentucky Wildcats haven't made it past the Elite Eight since 2019. Or excuse me, they've made it to the Elite Eight in 2019. They've not made the Final Four since 2015. And that's kind of where it starts and ends for most Kentucky fans, is that Kentucky's not really done a whole lot in the postseason uh, for over half a decade. You need to be able to see something here. When? That you, you can, we can talk all we want about statistics, about defense, about offense, about more efficient shooting, about beating better teams, about overcoming youth. But at the end of the, end of the day, what are people going to care about? Did you make it past the Elite Eight? Did you win in the NCAA tournament? That's what people are going to ask. That's what people are going to question. So to wrap it up here on what Kentucky basketball What's it going to take for them to overachieve this season? Overcome your youth, overcome the best of your schedule, and overcome your past, your recent past. Can Kentucky pick up those wins? We're going to have to see. Really looking forward to the buildup into this year's season. Really excited to, to, to talk about this alongside you guys. So if you have any thoughts on what it will take for Kentucky to overachieve, you can leave it in the YouTube comments below if you're watching on YouTube, or you can hit me on the socials at LockedOnUK on Twitter. All right, Kentucky versus Indiana is back. Really excited about that one. I want to talk about it in just a second. Before I do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Bird Dogs. I've talked about Bird Dogs for quite some time here on the show. I'm not wearing my Bird Dogs right now, but I will be later whenever I go to hang out with some friends at a campfire. They are absolutely phenomenal. They make you look good. They are stretched khaki shorts designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and give your leg a truly sculpted look bird dog shorts do the exact same thing as lululemon but they fit way better than regular shorts that are made of kind of like that stiff restricting cotton bird dogs fix this issue with shorts by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement it also has anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long i can absolutely attest to that whenever going to work out and exercise 100 percent bird dogs are absolutely perfect for any active or outside activity. You can also wear some of these. You can also get some Bird Dogs pants, which are really good for work events. You can pair them up with a lot of different outfits. I think that they're phenomenal. I absolutely love them. You should check out Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on college and enter promo code locked on college at checkout for a free Bird Dogs water bottle with your order. That is birddogs.com slash locked on college for a free water bottle at checkout. And you will not want to take off your bird dogs once you put them on. We promise you. All right, wrapping up the Tuesday edition of Locked on Kentucky. Lance Dahl, hanging out here with you one more time. If you've not subscribed to the show already on YouTube, please go ahead and do so. Join the fun. It's free, and if you don't like us, you can unsubscribe at any time. If you're listening on podcasts, please subscribe to the feed. If you don't like it, you can unsubscribe to the feed at any time. Leave us a review. Let us know what you think about the show. Got some great basketball and football content coming up here for you guys in the month of October. This could be, this could be a very special month for Mark Stoops in Kentucky football. We're just going to have to see. Going to have more Georgia talk coming for you this week as well. I know some of you have been asking about football. We're going to get to it. Uh, but a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys want to hear about basketball as well. So we're also going to discuss it. And speaking of, I feel like we have to talk about this today, about Kentucky basketball announcing that they will be having a four-year series with the Indiana Hoosiers starting in the 2025 season. It is back. That's actually how the press release started uh, for, for the Kentucky Wildcats and the Indiana Hoosiers. Both of them posted uh, this press release earlier. It started by saying, it's back. The rivalry between UK and IU, one of college basketball's most important and storied rivalries, is back on the schedule. Mitch Barnhart and Scott Dolson, the two athletic directors for UK and IU, have jointly agreed to a four-game men's basketball series beginning with the 2025-26 season and continuing through the 2028-2029 campaign. According to the press release, the four-game series will include two home games for each program to provide more Hoosier fans with an opportunity to witness an IU-UK game firsthand. IU has elected to hold one of its home contests at Lucas Oil Stadium 
in Indianapolis. The two programs face each other in Indianapolis 10 times from 1987 to 2005 at the Hoosier RCA Dome, games that featured electric atmospheres in front of crowds in excess of 40,000. The answer is no, I do not care that Watford hit that shot. Don't at me. The series schedule is December 20th, 2025 at home at Rupp Arena. December 27th in 2026, you're going to Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. That's technically an IU home game. In 2027, Rupp Arena, Central Bank Center in Lexington, Kentucky. And then in 2028, you're playing in Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. Mitch Barnhart said, quote, it's a great time or it's great to renew this series, which is among the most competitive rivalries and storied traditions of college basketball. The matchup will resume its place as one of the nation's most anticipated games of the season. This emanated from Coach Cal and Coach Woodson getting together and talking about playing again. I've enjoyed spending time with Scott Dolson and getting to know him better as we've worked out the details. Scott Dolson also said that he's very excited for this. John Calipari said, quote, this is a really important rivalry to our fans and the game of college basketball, and we're happy to bring it back. Mike and I have been friends for years, and I have the utmost respect for him as a coach and as a man. Let's do this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a lot of fun. I think the funniest part about this is I had absolutely no inkling that this was going to be happening anytime soon. But at an SEC basketball press conference, I was sitting there speaking with a close friend and ESPN radio uh, host, Jacob Goins, who was actually uh, about to join the Locked On family. And we'll probably talk to him very soon. Keep you updated on that. Um, But Jacob and I were sitting there talking about how, man, we really wish that Kentucky would get back to playing Indiana again. I feel we both agreed that it would be a lot of fun if you had like a back, a, a home and home, like a two-year series. And then here we are just a few days later and we're going to get that exactly. And we're actually going to get it exactly double. We're going to get to two, two home games for each team. I think this is excellent. We've been talking, I think there've been like multiple episodes actually where you and I on the show have talked about some non-con games that we want. And I've seen Indiana. I saw Gonzaga before we got to Gonzaga. I've seen several different teams out there that that you guys want to include in this Kentucky schedule, and Indiana may have been one of, if not the most popular response from you guys, and it was one of my favorites as well. So getting the Hoosiers back on the schedule, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. If you have any thoughts on Kentucky versus IU, please leave it in the YouTube comments below or hit me on the socials. Very excited about this. Very excited about the season, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore. And you can follow the show over on Instagram. That is at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, you can leave them in the YouTube comments below or hit me on the socials. I will see you all tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And God bless.